I constantly had issues with my avatar clipping through my garments when I was simulating them in Close 3D and sending them back to Unreal Engine. So I'm talking about the Clow Life Sync plugin in combination with Unreal Engine 5.6.1 now. And I've read somewhere that you could enable or disable the post process in your animation blueprint of the Meta Human to get rid of this issue but it didn't work. So finally I've studied the Clow manual to find the correct workflow and I will share it today with you. If you're interested in digital fashion Unreal Engine then hit the subscribe button and leave a comment and just let's start. Okay, I opened Unreal Engine and I created already a scene. I also added my Meta Human to the scene. This is done with the latest Meta Human character designer. So I'm working in the latest Unreal Engine version, which is in this case now 5.6.1. And also be aware that you have to enable all the plugins like Cloth 3D, Substance and also Meta Human Creator. First I want to show you the animation I'm using. So I'm creating a level sequence, add level sequence and then I just call it SQ Walk and to the sequence I select my Meta Human in the outline on the right side and drag and drop it here and I just like close this animation layers window and also to add an animation I'm deleting the Meta Human control rig but for this workflow you could also create a pose and using this. I make sure that I'm actually on frame zero and then have the body and add animation and for this use case I created a walk animation with a transition from the base pose to a walk cycle and then I go to the content browser wherever I saved my animation and selecting it. So I make a double click to open it. The first thing where already like a mistake can happen is I had in past projects where I had several meta humans and then probably you don't recognize it but they have different body shapes and this can already link to having issues with a clipping avatar. So be sure that you have the correct skeletal mesh selected and to double check it you can do following steps. So I have here my animation and here on the right side I also see the preview mesh for my animation and to see if I'm in the correct one I'm not closing the window and just minimize it. I'm selecting my meta human and go to the outliner to edit the blueprint. I change from components tab to viewport, select my meta human body and then normally you should already see on the right side also the skeletal mesh asset. With this little folder I can browse to the skeletal mesh and then it's showing up here in my content browser. So this is actually the skeletal mesh which I'm using in this scene for this avatar. And if I go back to the animation window I can just change the tab here from blueprint to walk transition. So this is my animation. I could now hit this little arrow button to select exactly the same asset which I selected in my content browser. Or I could drag and drop it over there. This is point one which is really important. Then also we need still a head mesh and this one should also be the matching one. So you need to add an element here and then selecting your SKM face mesh. Don't select the gray one, it's important that you have this one selected. So now one mistake I made in pass and it's like correctly written in the manual from Clo, which I wanna open quickly. So I'm actually on the connect closet site and for the live sync tool is a full documentation where you can find also step by step what I'm doing here and also go further. So sometimes it's helpful to check it. It always takes a bit more time, but as you see, these both steps I just followed here. And then there's like one important thing that you can export two different ways of your mesh to Clow. And there's a difference between the skeletal mesh versus geometry cache. From my understanding, skeletal mesh means that you have less details and it's faster to export. Geometry cache is what I'm normally using. And there you have like blend shapes between the frames, which kind of like having that the joints are working better. And if you have intersections between the mesh from the meta human, it's blending over. 
This workway is a bit heavier, it takes longer. I didn't see a big difference and I even tested the skeletal mesh and it was not working at all. It was not exporting any animation. So you would anyways go for a geometry cache. I'm not sure where the other workway is for. Probably if you have like gaming or if you just want to export a pose, I normally use skeletal mesh. But in this case, we go for geometry cache. And what the documentation is saying for geometry cache, it's important that you, if you go to the blueprint, you don't have to do anything. The only thing I'm usually doing in the beginning is going to the LODs and then setting them here to zero. In past, I also saw that when you select the body, you go to the disable post process blueprint but you just leave it as it is. So this is the default, don't change it. Now, if I'm going back to my animation, what I need to do here is to disable. And you see already something is happening, especially in the first frame. I have this ugly glitch, which I hope to improve with another workflow, but it didn't work. But just ignore it and it's good to have like some more frames in the beginning you can use then for your simulation. And then you see the regular animation. And if I'm comparing it, you see actually this is enable, it's not a big difference. Wait a second. I'm showing you with another simulation, the big difference. This is, this is enable, this is disable. And then you see like, there's a huge difference in between and this can lead to clipping issues. And it's the same with your meta human. So for the demonstration purpose, I'm quickly adding the other simulation animation. So if I'm zooming in and I'm now opening my MetaHuman Blueprint and I move it to the other window. No, I move it here that you can see it. Because if I'm now like disable and enable, you see the difference. And if this is not matching, it's not working. So in past, I was disabling this one and not enabling the other one. And this was incorrect as well as like, yeah, you have to do a setting at the end. Otherwise it's never merging never matching, sorry. So as I said, we keep this one here and here we go to enable and then the shapes are exactly the same. I am selecting now the animation I wanna use for today. And this was also confusing for me because I don't have this ugly glitch when I have disable selected, but with enable I have it and that was quite fearful. So yeah, now I'm taking it as it is. I don't know what where this bug is coming from. If someone knows, please let me know in the comments. I already have like a dress which I want to use for the simulation, which I prepped here and it's already in the base pose of the meta human I created. So I'm going back to Unreal Engine, switch from animation to Claw Marvelous Designer Life Sync. And then Life Sync, I select Geometry Cache and ignore what the previews are showing. They never correct. So I'm just exporting this. And now when I'm in Claw, the first thing I would check is the frame rate. So if you have set up something to a frame rate in your sequence to 24, be aware that the claw frame rate is set to 30 by default. And if you want to change it as well to 24, you need to select preserve fra frames first and then selecting 24. Then you have the same end frame and then the end frame is not changing. And that's very important. If you do it the other way around, like first like changing the frame rate and then like selecting the preserve frames then it's not working i just tried a few seconds ago i had to delete i had to do this again so yeah i'm staying with 30 i have actually 30 for this demonstration and now i can see that i have my animation here and it's running i just can hit the play button and see it i'm switching back to the beginning and also here a few things I'm checking is normally with the avatar. By default, it's set to three, which I feel it's a bit too much. I also tested it with a skin offset of one. So this is also working because now with the correct setup, there should be nothing clipping through. Even we have like a lower skin offset. And then I also check my garment. You can have clipping issues if you keep a particle distance of 20 normally 14 should work and lower as well just slowing down like your computer and the simulation and the recording but in my case i have actually set it to eight so just select all your pattern pieces or you can also have variations between them 
I set the particle distance to 8 and then also at thickness collision recommended by Chloe it's 2.5 and I would also leave it as this. I'm also going here to this animation button. I'm also going here to the simulation button and make sure that you selected animation stable. These are normally the presets which allows a good simulation and you also can see in the property editor several settings which you could change if you change one of the settings here you're not longer in this animation stable mode but it keeps all the other settings so it's fine sometimes what can also help is when you're in st animation stable mode and you have clipping or like collision between things you could also set this up to a higher value it runs slower than when you record your animation but you get a smoother result especially if you have intersections with fingers or feet it can help you before i hit the record button i first simulate my garment again this is not completely necessary but i like to do it just that nothing is jumping because i added the new avatar to my project and i am also adding some wind for this case so it doesn't matter if you stop or run the simulation you can just now hit this little camera button and start recording so if i hit now the loop I can just chuck my animation and you see something is wrong with the hands. It can also be that it's due to the animation I used, which I downloaded from Fab. And if you don't need like the first frames, like this transition phase, you could also set the start frame in the configurations to 30. And then we can just like see the result like in a loop. For sure it's not completely looped. The start and ending is a bit different and i'm also always going back to my first frame in case like something is like crashing or deleting i have my base pose in the beginning and one thing i'm doing different since a few days only is that i set my garment to thick and adding thickness so if i select now my garment here on the right side you see like geometry thickness and i added like one or two millimeter depending like the straps i wanted to have like a bit thicker so i added like one still one for the cuffs i added a bit more like two and then i just keep like single layers for everything in past i had double layers and it had issues with like the normals and so on so i'm not doing it any longer and i'm just like importing everything in thick because i didn't found any issues in unreal so far it even improved my workflow and the outcome is quite nice so Let's say our garment is now simulated and I'm switching back to Unreal Engine. I can close my animation window and also here I set something. I just hit compile. I think I switched back and forth several times and save it. And I'm also adding my animation. Again, make sure that you add frame zero when you add your animation. Now I also bring the garment to Unreal Engine my settings i'm using now for a garment simulation is i leave this as it is single object thick unified uv coordinates and include cache animation this i deselect and i keep translucent first i hit the update button and just hitting ok it can take a while to kind of like get your garment in depending how many frames you simulated but still it works quite fast for me i have to say i think in past i've waited sometimes 15 minutes or longer to get the simulated garment in and now it's like a minute or two it's really not much if the garment looks okay i'm selecting it and now i hit the save button and i created a folder which i called claw once it's saved it's disappearing but no worries it's in our content browser when we go back to content clo it's called look for because my clo file is called like this and then geometry cache and i can drag and drop this here and also one thing which is super important that this is matching the position of your avatar so my avatar is actually on zero so i'm also by selecting this garment I'm like hitting zero. You can also check where your avatar is positioned by like selecting the avatar. You can even with the right mouse click copy and then paste this to your garment and you'll be sure that it's exactly the same position. Also check it for rotation and scale. If this is messed up it will not work. And then I need to add the garment also to the sequencer. So I select it in the 3D space and in the outliner I can drag and drop it. See it's popping up here. 
I still make sure that I'm on frame zero, same where my animation is starting. I go to track and then geometry cut. And now I really don't have anywhere a clipping. She's still wearing her underwear, which is a bit unfortunate, but if I hit now loop and press play, you see nothing, oh, you see really nothing is happening. And I want to start frame now at 30, and then we can just watch the loop. There's really nothing clipping. There's no intersection. You see this dress is like really tight and we have nowhere something happening, which is fantastic and really smooth now. To summarize this tutorial, which point you should definitely check when you have clipping issues is that you first export geometry cache, don't do anything in the blueprint of the avatar, but enable in the animation window this post-process thing, so then it's matching. Check that the avatar body is exactly the same you are exporting as the one you're using in your project. Check your garment settings are correct. Have a lower particle distance in case if you have clipping issues. Set the LOD lower or even check if you have real-time running. Sometimes this can also have issues. And also check if the frames are matching. Oh, maybe one thing to add is I hadn't passed the issue that exactly one frame was like off. So probably you check like is there probably one frame or another which is not working? I hope this tutorial explained to you why you have to do certain settings and to improve your workflow. If you like content like this, I would appreciate if you subscribe to the channel, like and leave a comment. Leave also a comment if you have any questions. I'm quite responsive. And see you next time.